What's going on YouTube? Toyota is a brand that offers more SUVs and crossovers than pretty much any other brand out there. Yet with the three row crossover segment growing dimensionally, Toyota has just added a new model to the lineup, the Grand Highlander. This large crossover fits below the also new Toyota Sequoia based on price, but is actually bigger in size than its body on frame older brother. So now that begs the question, is it worth spending about 20 grand more on a Sequoia over a Grand Highlander? That's the question we're going to answer today. Now like always, let's quickly establish the pricing and trim levels right from the start. We already mentioned that there is quite a price difference between them, actually over $20,000 when we compare fully loaded models. For Sequoia, that is the Capstone 4x4 at $80,906. And for the Grand Highlander, that is the Platinum Hybrid Max at $59,460. Now this is going to be an objective comparison. We have done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories, but at the end of the comparison, we will sum up with our thoughts and revisit the large price difference for a value assessment. With that being said, let's get into the comparison. Starting here with the exteriors, Toyota has done a good job of visually differentiating them, even though they are both similar sized. While the Sequoia has a very tough and boxy design inspired by the Tundra, the all-new Grand Highlander has a much more relaxed design, definitely inspired by the RAV4. Both their grills are large and have chrome accenting on these loaded models, and both also have full LED projector headlights and LED fog lights, with only the Sequoia having sequential turn signals. Moving to the side, the Sequoia had a massive size advantage over the regular Highlander, but the gap narrows to 6.7 inches with this new Grand Highlander. That's not the whole story though, so you'll definitely want to stay tuned later in this video for the interior space comparison. Regardless of the actual measurements, the Sequoia still looks a lot larger with its boxy shape and 22 inch alloy wheels compared to 20 inches on the Grand Highlander. Around back, the same design themes continue, and as far as the actual features, they are very similar with exposed wipers and LED taillights with all three elements LED. Now checking out some of the individual features. Both of their mirrors have heating, blind spot monitoring, and power folding. The only difference is that only the Sequoia includes auto dimming. Safety is very important, so in addition to blind spot monitoring, both also include the latest safety sense with forward emergency braking and pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keeping assist, and auto high beam headlights. While a lot of things are very similar, there are just certain capability advantages that a body on frame SUV is going to have over a crossover. Towing is one of those things, with the Grand Highlander maxing out at 5,000 pounds, and the Sequoia nearly doubling that with 8,980 pounds in the capstone version. Our Sequoia also has auto leveling rear air suspension to keep things more stable when hauling large loads. But being comfortable and having plenty of luxury to pamper the whole family are also very important characteristics. So let's get into the cabins, but first, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. As we walk towards the interiors, both models have smart entry, as you would expect. And Remote Start is available via the FOB or app during the Toyota Connected trial. A small difference is that the Grand Highlander's FOB has model branding, whereas the Sequoia's is just blank. Once we open up the doors, we are greeted with cabins that have both very functional designs and also quite upscale looks, especially in the case of the Sequoia's two-tone black and white interior. They are finished in a fine semi-aniline leather with a quilted design and have 14 ways of power adjustment. 
In comparison, the Grand Highlander Platinum comes with regular leather trim seats and suede inserts, which are definitely less premium. And it also has less adjustability at 10 ways. Both of them have heating, ventilation, and memory. Getting inside, the Sequoia is much higher off the ground, but it has power deploying running boards to make getting in just as easy as in the Grand Highlander. Once fully inside, we can get into the overall material quality. As you might expect given the price difference, the Sequoia is going to have a full Lexus level interior, with leather over all parts of the door trim, all across the upper dash, and then tons of genuine open pore walnut wood trim through the middle dash and center console. The Grand Highlander's cabin is still relatively premium but it certainly doesn't rise to that level, with more hard touch materials and faux carbon fiber trim instead of real wood. After startup, you'll see 12.3 inch digital gauge clusters on both, although the screens themselves have different shapes and graphics. Both also have large head-up displays. Moving back to the steering wheels, we have totally different designs, but both with heating, although only the Sequoia has power adjustment. So is the bigger SUV bigger when it comes to storage? Well, actually no. While Sequoia has plenty of space to fit things in its huge center console, the Grand Highlander's console is just as big, and then it has more space in the front bin and even a passenger size storage shelf. Shifting our attention to the shifters, we have a traditional easy to use one in the Sequoia versus a fiddly always bumped to the left electronic one in the Grand Highlander. The Highlander also has paddle shifters and both of them have 360 degree camera systems when in reverse. In this area we also have more controls for the Sequoia which again contribute to it having superior towing abilities. We have a trailer backup assist function and trailer brake controller in this area below the three zone automatic climate controls that both models have. And speaking of controls, that now brings us to the volume knobs, so let's give the JBL audio systems a sample. Even though they're both JBL and very bass heavy as such, the Sequoia does have the fuller sound quality all in all. Now let's take a look at these screens. Both of them have large ones, but the Sequoia has the larger one at 14 inches versus 12.3 inches. But size aside, they still have the newest Toyota infotainment system with navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Last but certainly not least, for the front of the interiors, both models have digital camera rear view mirrors and large panoramic sunroofs. But heading to the rear areas, this is where things really start to get interesting. Second row space is almost exactly the same with both leg and headroom within a few tenths of an inch of each other. As far as the features back here, they both spoil the occupants with a long list of amenities. There are rear climate controls, vents, two USB ports, household power outlets, sunshades, and the seats themselves are even heated and ventilated. The only difference in this regard is that the storage bin between the captain's chairs is removable on the Grand Highlander instead of fixed. Let's head to the next row of seats. The Grand Highlander is much larger than the regular Highlander back here, and you might be surprised to find out that it is also much more comfortable than the Sequoia as well. The Sequoia does not have an independent rear suspension, which means that the floor is very high, and we have compromised headroom and thigh support. Even though the seats can slide back and forth, the Grand Highlander's exceptional comfort 
means it's definitely going to be the way to go if you use the third row frequently. And moving out back, we're going to see the same story play out again. The very thing that helps the Sequoia have more towing capability also means that its cargo capacity is compromised. Again, the load floor is quite high, and if the third row seats are slid all the way back, there is only 11.5 cubic feet remaining. This means that the Grand Highlander has about a 10 cubic foot cargo capacity advantage maintained throughout all the seating configurations, and 10% more maximum volume. Sequoia does have some redeeming elements though. First, it has rear glass that opens independently of the tailgate. And it also has a power folding third row, which is unavailable in the Grand Highlander. Alright, that's it for the interiors. But now, let's take this fight to the streets. As you probably know, Toyota is the industry leader in hybrid technology. And as such, both of these two are powered by high performance hybrid systems. But they're definitely not the same system since the Grand Highlander is using a 2.4 liter turbo four-cylinder as the foundation, compared to the Sequoia using a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 instead. That's a delta of exactly 75 more horsepower and 183 pound-feet of torque. It means that the larger and heavier Sequoia still accelerates to 60, about 7 tenths of a second faster than the highest performance Grand Highlander. <laughs> There's a little bit past 60 miles an hour. <laughs> wow. Dang, I think <laughs> the Sequoia knew it was on camera. That's faster than it has been for the rest of the week. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, when wow. you go full throttle, honest, yeah. I mean, of course, day-to-day -day driving, you don't go full throttle that often, but yeah, full throttle, that torque tickled me belly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, we're up to 60 miles per hour in the Grand Highlander. So even though this is a big gal, she can move when she has 362 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. That's a, a lot of power for this segment, for sure. So just to remind you guys from the spec dump, what this is is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. We have a front electric motor. We also have a rear E-axle. All that goes together to give you the power figures I just cited. As far as the other elements, torque and packaging requirements mean that the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max is actually rocking an old-school 6-speed automatic transmission, compared to a 10-speed in the Sequoia. While the 6 is still smooth, the Sequoia's is quicker and has more gears to choose from. It's kind of more gingerly uh, taking off there. I do want to talk about your 10-speed automatic transmission that you have on board with the Sequoia. So um, it's a very good transmission. Uh, certainly, we've had no issues with it over the past week. It gives you exactly the power that you need when you need it. Um, so I really have nothing else to say. And in the times that you don't need a bunch of power, it just blends right into the background. Um, and a traditional six-speed automatic as well as part of this powertrain. So it's a very interesting setup that really gives this a performance edge unlike most things in the segment. Let's talk about the sound level readings. We sampled both of them at 55 miles per hour on smooth roads, even though the Grand Highlander's reading was technically taken in Hawaii. The Sequoia tested quite a bit higher, most likely due to its aggressive engine sound amplification in order to sound like a V8. Alright, shall we take a sound level reading at 55 miles per hour? Speed up here a little bit. Alrighty, so it looks like the lowest we're getting here is 58.7 decibels. Alright, looks like we've settled at 55 decibels even. Being quiet inside the cabins is one factor in comfort, but another is the ride quality. We have some big differences here as well. Even with the available adaptive dampers, 
the Sequoia is going to ride in a much more truck-like manner, which means you will feel more small vibrations and impacts from the suspension. In comparison, the Grand Highlander is tuned very softly, so that even large potholes are barely registered inside the cabin. Now we're on a pretty smooth stretch of highway here, but that hasn't been the case for the entire day. We've driven this around quite a lot uh, and hit a lot of different kinds of road surfaces, which has really demonstrated to us we have phenomenal ride quality on board. Toyota has really emphasized this. Of course, you know, the regular Highlander is known for being so comfortable, so smooth. I'm happy to say that those same attributes carry on for the Grand Highlander as well. You hit big bumps and stuff like that. You kind of see them, you hear them maybe, but you don't get much in terms of like vibration that's going to enter the cabin. And the seats themselves, very comfortable as well. And, uh, you know, it's a good arrangement. This feels roughly in line with most of the competition. It has a kind of a more traditional truck feel. Um, so if you're comparing to something like a Tahoe with the optional air suspension, it's not gonna be comparable to that. It is definitely gonna be a little bit rougher than that. But Neither of them are going to carve any canyons. And lastly for fuel economy, this is one of the coolest things about the Hybrid Max. Despite making big power, it still gets great fuel economy beating the Sequoia by 7 MPG combined. As promised, let's revisit the massive price difference of $21,446. Our scale indicates that we should award 5.25 points to the Grand Highlander to represent that. But, as always, I'll remind you that if money doesn't matter as much to you, then feel free to disregard this part. All right, you made it to the end. Congratulations. And the objective winner is going to be the Toyota Grand Highlander. But let's talk a little bit about who should be your winner. Well, the Sequoia, sh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Sequoia should be your winner if you need to tow and need a truck-based SUV. That should be the number one reason why you buy a Sequoia over a Grand Highlander is that tow capacity, it's a truck-based SUV. It's a Tundra with a back on it. So if you need that truck yep. capability, get the Sequoia. Also, ultimate power. If you want the Lexus-like luxury, it's gonna be more luxurious than Grand Highlander. Also, the tough and macho design is something I appreciate more than the Grand Highlander. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a big thing. Some people are really gonna be looking for that tough truck look, and they're not gonna get that with the Grand Highlander. All right, now the Grand Highlander, though, that should be your winner, of course, if you want the ultimate cargo and utility space. It's just a more functional vehicle. You have lots of powertrain choices, so you can really spec the Grand Highlander to be powerful like the one in this video, or you can go for a hybrid and get 36 miles per gallon, which is a very appealing number, of course. Um, it's much less expensive. Great uh, savings <laughs> if you go for this, almost $20,000 in this video, and you have a more comfortable and quiet ride. Now, we want to know your opinions about this matter. Which are you taking? Are you taking the Sequoia or are you taking the Grand Highlander? Make sure you let us know that in the comments below. Also, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. We would really appreciate it if you joined this Car Confections family and hit that subscribe button down below. By doing so, you're going to get notified on some of our most recent comparisons on the newest cars on the market so you won't want to miss out. Also check out our website as well as our TikTok and Instagram pages. There's a lot of information for you all to get access to. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.